Do you know what it is the assassins fight for? Peace in all things, right? It's not enough to end the violence one man inflicts upon another, it's about peace within as well. Recently I made a video all about how Ezio was a terrible assassin, and in that video I go over all the reasons as to why, objectively, in Assassin's Creed Revelations, Ezio was a terrible assassin, because all he would do at multiple points throughout the story is break all three tenets of the Assassin's Creed. However, since making that video I've noticed that there has been some confusion on the Creed itself and what that means, so I wanted to take the time and go over it as best as I can. The Assassin's Creed has three tenants that all Assassins in the Brotherhood must follow, and are essential. Al Mulim, the mentor of the Levantine Brotherhood in the 11th century, said it perfectly, that they are nothing if they do not abide by the Creed. These tenants are, stay your blade from the flesh of an innocent, hide in plain sight, never compromise the Brotherhood. The aim of the Assassins originally, up until Altair took over the Brotherhood after the death of Al Mulim, was that of peace in all things. They believed that political assassins assassinations and the death of the corrupt and twisted would bring a sense of peace to the land but also to oneself, as they believed you cannot have one without the other. Without this peace, it could manifest in ugly ways, through arrogance and overconfidence, which seems to be a fatal flaw when it comes to the creed and its maxim. They believed that the murder of innocents and civilians who did not need to die was wrong, as it sowed not only discord and strife, but it also tarnished the reputation of the order, being seen as indiscriminate butchers rather than precise killers. No good could come from the murder of civilians and innocents who didn't need to die. If someone was being manipulated or were just ignorant. The assassins would try and solve this through education and understanding, believing these people could be capable of being saved, but they also believed that some people were just too far gone and couldn't be saved. Assassinations were deemed necessary, but there was a grey area in which a person could do wrong and still be spared, provided that there was a reason for it. The second tenant of the Brotherhood is what gives the assassins their strength. Hide in plain sight. Let the people mask you such that you become one with the crowd. The aim was to get up close to your target stealthily and flee just as quickly. There was this sense of illusion when it came to how an assassin could just pop up somewhere and commit a grand assassination right then and there of a corrupt leader, only to simply vanish in the blink of an eye into the depths of the crowd. If the assassin was spotted, the illusion would shatter, making it harder to reach their target. An assassin should be one with the crowd, not bringing attention to oneself. Doing so would shatter the illusion and could risk ruining the assassination attempt, resulting in a target escape and being made aware that the assassin was here. The final tenant of the Assassin's Creed was to never compromise the Brotherhood. Its meaning should be obvious. Your actions must never bring harm upon us, direct or indirect. The actions of one mustn't bring harm to all. If an assassin was to fail, be captured or chased, they must never commit any action or say anything that could link them back to the Brotherhood, nor bring any harm to any of its members. The Assassins also have a maxim which encapsulates the Assassin's Creed with the following phrase. Nothing is true, everything is permitted. For some reason, however, there's confusion here as people think that this means that an assassin like Ezio can go around committing borderline domestic terrorism and it'd be perfectly fine because everything is permitted. There's another quote by Al Walim that perfectly deals with this exact line of thinking from Assassin's Creed 1 when Altair had the same worldview. You do not understand the true meaning of the phrase, my child. It does not grant you the freedom to do as you wish, it's a knowledge meant to guide your senses it expects a wisdom that you clearly lack. It doesn't command an assassin to be free of all responsibility, it instead commands an assassin to be wise. Altair comments later in Assassin's Creed 1 that to understand the maxim, they had to transcend the illusion of the world, and that the laws people create do not arise from divinity, rather reason. Just because you can do something, just because you are capable of doing something, does that mean that you should? Is there another way of going about it? I would argue that the freedom of choice is essential here for the assassins. An assassin should always have the choice to choose which path to take, whether that's one of peace or one of chaos. An assassin can act, and an assassin can choose not to. They must be the ones to make an informed decision and be able to act on that. Murder, assassinations, thievery. These are things everyday people would consider wrong, but in the eyes of the assassins it is a means to an end, and the assassins have to live with that and choose to partake in this. They're not killing
killing for the sake of killing, they are killing for a noble goal, that of peace. And if they have to kill one man to save a thousand, it seems like a small sacrifice, right? But murder is still murder. Yet without committing this one assassination, more pain and suffering, more loss of life could go on. They are the ones in control of their actions and must live with them for better or worse. You have that freedom, but it practically begs you to be wise and to think about what you're doing and the implications of it all. Altair in Assassin's Creed 1 wasn't interested in politics, but it wasn't until the Rafik of Akka pointed out that his actions shaped the course of politics in some very real ways. He may not be interested in politics, but he is a politician in his own way. His actions have a ripple effect, and that ripple shapes the course of history, of human lives for better or for worse. Another example was the arrogance and overconfidence Altair displayed in Solomon's temple. He assassinated the praying man, an innocent. This then led to a heated argument between Malik and himself, which then led to Altair announcing himself to Robert de Saab, leading to getting humiliated and thrown out the room, while Malik loses his brother and his arm. This then led to the siege of Masyaf, where even more assassins were attacked and killed, all because of the actions Altair committed under the guise of nothing is true, everything is permitted. He had that choice, and he took it at face value rather than as a warning or as a gateway to understanding. It's only by having that freedom to choose, and choosing the wrong path, one of arrogance and misunderstanding, that Altair later begins to understand the true meaning of the creed, and how his actions, large and small, shape the lives of others around him. If nothing is true, then why follow the creed? If everything is permitted, he can do what he likes, right? At a glance, the maxim of nothing is true, everything is permitted sounds rather cynical, and it would be if it were doctrine, but it's not. It's merely an observation on the nature of reality and the world we inhabit. Ezio would later say in Revelations to Sophia Sartor what the maxim truly means. To say that nothing is true is to realise that the foundations of society are fragile, and that we must be the shepherds of our own civilization. To say that everything is permitted is to understand that we are the architects of our actions, and that we must live with their consequences, whether glorious or tragic. Even Ezio understands, which is ironic considering his actions in Revelations very much showcases a version of Ezio which follows nothing is true, everything is permitted as doctrine and lives a life of the ends justify the means. An interesting extension to the Assassin's Creed is when Connor becomes an assassin. Because of his upbringing as a member of the Kanaka Haka, he was taught compassion and respect for all living things, and because of this, it led him to extend the first tenant of the creed to trying to spare the Templars rather than straight up killing them, which can be seen with William Johnson and his father Hatham Kenway. However, However, his mentor Achilles had to constantly remind Connor that as an assassin, it was vital for people like the Templars to die. In Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, we can see that upon originally hearing the Queen for the first time, Edward Kenway mocks it, and instead uses it as justification for the pursuit of fame and fortune, thinking however he likes and acting however he pleases, despite the assassins that he met explaining that he's misinterpreting the Creed. Despite this, when he does go on to join the Assassin Brotherhood, when speaking with the mentor Artabai, he remarks that the Maxim is only a first step to understanding and not its final form. Along with this, the assassin Mary Reed goes on to tell Edward early on that the Creed doesn't call for assassins to act or submit, but to be wise and to choose for themselves when and how to act. In Assassin's Creed Unity at the end of the game, Arno Dorian, who's a member of the French Brotherhood, goes on to say that the maxim of the Creed serves more as a guide and a warning, rather than something an assassin should follow to the letter. He says, Ideals too easily give way to dogma. Dogma becomes fanaticism. Only we can decide whether the road we walk carries too high a toll. All that we do, all that we are, begins and ends with ourselves. With all this being said, the Creed does have three great ironies which were observations made about the Creed, along with the actions of the assassins who follow it. They were. The assassins seek to promote peace but commit murder. The assassins seek to open the minds of men but require obedience to rules. The assassins seek to reveal the danger of blind faith yet practice it themselves. While pretty hypocritical, the ironies didn't hurt the assassin's cause, instead demonstrated the way that they embraced contradiction, that one may be two things, opposite in every way simultaneously. Another part of the creed is the importance of knowledge, which allows one to learn and grow. This was touched upon briefly during the assassination of Jubayet, a scholar in Damascus who Altair was dispatched to kill after ordering a mass burning of books, along with being a Templar. You can make the case that the assassin's creed's biggest downfall could be overconfidence and ignorance. If one truly doesn't understand the meaning of the creed, all hell can break loose. Whether that's on a relatively small scale such as the events of Solomon's Temple, or the large-scale issues with the Colonial Brotherhood doing 
doing everything they can to secure pieces of Eden from the Templars, regardless on the damage and chaos they inflict, or Ezio's idea of detonating stockpiles of gunpowder in Cappadocia to lure out the Templar, or destroying the Great Chain and crippling the fleet of Constantinople with Greek fire. A failure to think things through, a failure of understanding the creed, a failure of thinking that you are above the creed. Each action committed, large or small, have an impact, have an effect, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. You can argue too that maybe the creed is a safety blanket in being able to live with the consequences of one's actions by telling an assassin what they shouldn't do. Could an assassin live with themselves if they've slaughtered innocents? Could they live with themselves if they got their brothers and sisters harmed because of their actions? Sometimes there's no other way. Sometimes you need to do the difficult choice. Sometimes you have to assassinate that guy, but you can always have a choice. You can always choose. Choose whether to go through with it or not. But again, we must live the consequences of our actions, whether that's glorious or tragic. Knowledge, understanding, freedom of choice, humility and peace seem to be some of the core values that the maxim of the creed pushes for its assassins. When is enough enough? How far will you go to get the job done? How much can you live with before you end up doing more harm than good? Can you live with the consequences of your actions? Can you be humble and admit your flaws? Can you tell that society is easily malleable and the assassins aren't so different? Morality and law mean nothing. It's up to a person's reason. And as an assassin, you must make that decision on if this is the best cause of action. Can you really justify taking this life, going down this path? Why are you doing it simply because you can or because you're told? So after all, nothing is true. Everything is permitted. You have free will and you have that choice. It's always about choice. One final thing before I end this video, the assassins may view themselves as the good guys and what they're doing could be seen as doing the right things, but they're still assassins. They're still assassinating people. Sean Hastings put it best here in this interaction you can have in Assassin's Creed Hey, too. nice work today. You're a natural. Thanks. It's definitely getting easier. I gotta say, after all the crap I went through at Abstergo, it's nice to be with the good guys. Good guys? Let's not get carried away. What's that supposed to mean? In case you've forgotten, Rebecca, we're assassins. I can look it up for you if you like. Basically, it means we assassinate people. Only when we have to. It's a choice. You're choosing to kill. I haven't killed anyone. No, not yet. But what do you think all this is for, eh? You think Lucy is giving you Ezio's abilities so you can build schools in South America and deliver rice to starving Indonesians? What are you, Desmond? A vegan? You'd be the first vegan assassin in history. Look, it's not ideal. And taking a life is never easy. But sometimes, there's no other way. Sometimes, Desmond, people have to die for things to change. She's got a point. But don't fool yourself into thinking you have no say. I mean, isn't that what we're all about here? Safeguarding free will? I hope this video helped shed some light on the Assassin's Creed and what the Maxim truly means. It's something that's been on my mind ever since making the Ezio was a terrible assassin video. And I thought I could help bring some awareness on the Maxim, the tenants, and why it doesn't mean you can go around doing whatever you like because of the whole nothing is true, everything is permitted argument. If you're a fan of Assassin's Creed as much as I am, I reckon you're going to enjoy the video that's up on screen now. Thank you so much for watching and if you're interested in more, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel. I hope you're all having an amazing day and I'll see you in the next video.